the uh, daughter of the late great peace and blessings upon his eternal soul, Lucky Dewey. That's a little, oh, give, give me, let me give you a little tiny, tiny Lucky Dewey, what do you call that, uh, connection. When I was, uh, my seminal job, as I was, uh, when I was arts director at WBAI Radio, my office had a lot of posters around, remind me, when I was like 17, you know, 16, when I had all those big posts like Jay and Malcolm and all the rest of them, my, my room, my, my grandmother used to go in my, in my room, you know, because all the boys, when my older brothers were gone, my, my younger brother was in jail, so I, the boys' room was next to my room, and I just put all kinds of posters up there, I mean, I, I don't got Castro, I got all kinds of people, you know, I think I had, I'm a, I mean, I had a bunch of people. The point is, right, that um, so I sort of duplicated the thing in the office at WBAI, but that was like a, a lot of arts thing. But right behind the door, my desk, like if you come in the door, right, my desk, I always do stuff different, my desk was a little skewed, you know, but behind the door is this huge poster of Lucky Doobie, and then, you know, it's locks, and he was sort of, the way he was, the locks were hanging down like that. Now, I had locks too. Strange enough, I looked just like Lucky Doobie in that. And that poster. So people would walk in, they would, you know, and they'd see me, you know, and they'd look around, they see the poster. They look, they look at me, look at me. <laughs> Very confusing. Anyway, this little thing. But, um, uh, Bungie Doobie, I mean, that's, I, Bungie Doobie, I just love her voice. I don't know why, you know, just uh, going home. Going home, by the way. Oh, look. Since I'm doing all this ADO stuff, I have, I, I, I don't really report a lot on Africa, you know, there's so much happening. But I do want to say one thing because it affects, when I first came to Africa, when I came here in 2003, right before I left, I was in Silver Spring, Maryland. Well, I was in Washington, D.C., right before I was in Silver Spring, Maryland. I see, I met, met a bunch of uh, basically middle class, you know, uh, folks, but boomers, whatever it happened. And there was this, not scheme, but this thing that we're doing where, you know, their houses, say they were older, and they didn't need that big house anymore. So they would rent that house, or would do something with the house with a loan like that, take that and go to Africa and buy, you know, go to Africa here, and buy some property here. But um, they wouldn't really spend any money because the money they would make, make off the rental or whatever they were doing at their house, whatever they was doing, loan against whatever it is, that would cover their costs here and they can prosper. See what I mean? But so you can look at that as a business name or something like that. Now, what's been happening in Africa, you know, especially with like AU's been talking about that. I know sadik has been talking about that too much, those southern um, things, you know, this southern African thing. They haven't been talking about that. But there is a thing that started about, I don't know, when like 1967 they started talking about this. All this stuff that's been happening, land accusation, all this stuff. This, people have been talking about this for a long time, since the 60s, 70s, right? But about, um, about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, um, the East, some East African nations, uh, got together because they wanted to start what's called an East African Federation. This this idea is like has been going on since the 60s. An East African Federation. And so they finally started talks, and it might happen. Now these federations stuff like that, it's about trade. You know what I mean? Because the first thing before they bring in the troops, you know, you got to have trade routes. I mean that's what's happening. Africa. I mean uh, China's doing the trade. Da, da, da. Um, the, the U.S. doing the military. They're trying to do some tr trade things too. You know, they said this the African. I think there's an American African whatever trade association. I reported that before. But this is interesting because in this East African uh, um, federation, there are six countries. Uh, um, Tanzania, which would also have to hold the capital of this of this place, right? Um, uh, uh, Rwanda. Now Rwanda's trying to be tech, and you know the, the, the president there. I don't want to get into that stuff, but you know he's, he's he's a force in Africa now, especially in East Africa. Uganda, right? Burundi. Burundi basically is right. Well, shit, sir. Well, Burundi is basically right next to um, uh, right, right next to Rwanda. You, uh, I said Uganda. Um, uh, Burundi. Uh, Kenya, the biggest country in this. Configuration and South Sudan, the newest country. You know, cause it's like there's like 54 countries in in Africa. Uh, and anyway, so we so we're talking about these countries here. Uh, uh, where are they? So we have Tanzania right there, right? Kenya, uh, Uganda, uh, Burundi, and, um, and Rwanda is in that area. And South Sudan, we the newest country right there. Now, South Sudan has oil. So, so 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 they got tech, they got oil, uh, but most importantly that people don't understand. Remember, the mean age for, an, for, for Africa, for its population, all of Africa is under 30, right? Think about this. The mean age in these, in these countries in this area is under 20 years old. Under 20 years old. Think about that. 
So anyway, so so if this trade stuff happening and then it become a thing that's solid thing, they'll have one currency. Um, uh, in that area, fairly, you know, the religion is fairly Christian. They have a little bit of Muslim coming in there. But so that's a unified area. There's certain things that have to unify the area. Traditional religions, you know what I mean, um, also play a part in this. But I'm going to get into in the minutia of that. But what I'm saying is that, interesting enough, that how ADOS plays in this. If, when we get reparations, then we will be an economic force, right? And so these trade things that are being put into place now, this, everything's working in, in sympathetical, you know what I mean? So these trade things, we, we, it, it, if, the, if the AU grants, you know, a, 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 what do you call it, a continent-wide visa for, for, for ADOS, that would be wonderful. Well, you know, there's black people in diaspora, that would be wonderful. All these kind of things are happening. So what I'm trying to say, if when we get our reparations, whatever we get, then that will make us an economic block, and then we can trade. But you can have a like me, you, know, you can have a presence in the states and a presence in Africa someplace. Okay, so that's a uh, that's the that, that, that's, I mean that's you understand how mind blowing that is. I mean it's as mind blowing as grape juice and coconut water, and it's gonna taste just as good. That's a little thought from me, T, from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from a desk of the A D O S. That would be the uh, American descendants of chattel slavery.